Hello and welcome to another evening of Frank Conversation here on Hard Copy, coming to you from our studios in Abuja. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. Last week, we started a conversation with the Minister of Works and Housing, Mabatsane Fashola, a senior advocate of Nigeria. We stayed on the matter of housing, especially in the light of the recent building collapse in Ikoyi, Lagos. Tonight, we bring you the concluding part of our interview with the minister, where he speaks on funding for our roads and the criteria for the tax credit scheme. Politics is also a part of the bargain tonight as we ask questions on his ambitions and those of his party members for 2023. To works now, um, and there's always a lot of focus and interest <laughs> in works because, I mean, we must travel as, mu as much as possible and, and this is how the country is also linked. Um, but the projections don't look very good. While defending uh, your ministry's uh, budget for 2022, uh, you are pretty optimistic as to the timelines of some landmark pr projects. You believe that a number of them can be delivered within the lifetime of this administration. Uh, but when you look at how much has been earmarked for roads, 350 billion, and how much you currently owe contractors, 420 billion naira, there are questions as to whether or not your budget and your projections for next year are not already defeated. Certainly not. Uh, uh, well, I always prefer to see angels. Maybe you're looking at the devils, and that's why the projections <laughs> may not look good for you. Um, the budget is only one side of our many funding options. Uh, we have the Shukuk, we have the tax credit scheme, we have the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund, and we're still looking at many other options. They're not captured fund. in the budget, are they? They're, they're reported. They're reported and accounted for, but the budget is only one option. And some of them, as, as, as you know, uh, seek to attract private capital and uh, so like the tax credit scheme is a strategic partnership of advancing our taxes to us before they are due. You have mentioned a few companies that have, you know, will I say logged into the tax credit scheme, uh, mm. Dangote, Flour Mills of Nigeria, even the NNPC has also logged into it. However, there are questions as to what the criteria is for the tax credit scheme the criteria is simple the the authority that is liable to pay the tax nominates the pro project they want to invest in inevitably you will find out that the projects they choose are the projects that affect their businesses or that who or whose resolution will positively impact them so and we can't we can't legislate against that are you open to more companies coming forward for this tax credit scheme? That's why I said you are probably seeing devils and I'm seeing angels because I'm, going, I'm expecting more companies to come. The, the, the uh, policy is taking foothold and that's why I tell people that between policy and results, there's always a distance to travel. And I recall that when we first announced this policy, some people said, oh, why only Dangote? Now I came out to explain to them, it's not only Dangote, it's av uh, available to anybody who is eligible. The co some of the conditions are that the infrastructure must be accessible to members of the public, not for your own business alone. And many other conditions that are spelled out in uh, Executive Order 7. So where I'm expecting more. Okay. You As the knowledge you, deepens... You haven't seen any interest so far because uh, there have been complaints of opacity. It would seem that they already... I haven't those had those complaints. You haven't? If you have had them, I haven't had them. Okay. And I'm ready to respond to them if they are made open. Have you openly invited companies you think might be interested in this tax credit The tax credit does policy. not require me to invite companies. It mm. requires companies to read the policy and then send a request to me. I'm interested in road A or B or C. Well, I, I think what, That's I, how it works. What, what I would ask is, for the roads that you have, I mean, earmarked for construction, mm. uh, do you think that there are companies that could be interested um, in perhaps doing those roads in return uh, for getting tax credits? And I, I'm wondering if you've reached out to them. It could, you don't think it could work either way? How can I make this clearer to you? The policy 
does not require me to start knocking on the doors of companies. That's not my responsibility. We've made a policy. If you are interested, this is how it works. Step in. Our doors are open. And that's how we work with it. Is there a way to value how much, when the roads are eventually built, that, you know, indeed companies really did give value for money? Oh, by all means. Come on. Look, listen. <laughs> First of all, one of the things that happens in our work is that the pricing process is approved by the statutory price advisor of government, which is the Bureau of Public Procurement. First of all. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, at every stage of work that is done, not only are measurements taken, we have laboratories at construction sites measuring the temperature of asphalt, the coring and the uh, achievement of standards designed through coring and so many things being done before certificates of payments are even generated. And hopefully one day you will come along with me to see what happens on this site so that you can help report back to members of the public. No, roads are not just being built. Mm -hmm. The laboratories to ensure the quality of every material that is used fits the specified uh, uh, condition. These are things that are not visible to members of the public. So even before the certificates leave the scene of construction and gets to us in the office, all of these checks have been done. They are revalidated in the office before we process for payment. Have we benefited so far from the scheme? From the tax credit scheme? Without a doubt. I mean, the Obajana Akaba Road uh, has delivered so many benefits. The Apapa Oroshoki Road has delivered uh, uh, on, on, on countable blessings, uh, benefits, whether in terms of work provided for the people who build the road, the suppliers of the aggregates, the laterite, the reinforcement. On the Obajan Akaba Road, for example, now travel time has dropped by as much as uh, almost uh, 45 minutes. And time saved is money. The, the benefits are humongous. We did a study on that road. The new businesses that have sprung up simply because that road was built are documented and detailed and, and, and uh, reports are being compiled. So there's a lot going on. Well, I also don't know. I do, I do not. Well, I do not know if this is the same thing as the PPP. I know you're also looking at public-private partnership. Perhaps was also had to do with the the tolling policy. Uh, if it was related with the tolling policy, how far has that gone? Well, again, you see, when we hear these terms of art from other jurisdictions, I think that before we begin to discuss them in detail just as we've moved from low-cost housing and uh, uh, what was the other term you were speaking about? Uh, affordable <laughs> housing. Affordable. We need to really, really educate ourselves what these things mean. Public-private partnerships take many, many forms. In some countries, it is tax credit. In some countries, it is direct investment. In some countries, there, there's so many shapes you can, you can, uh, 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 how, how do you say this? Uh, there are so many ways to slice it. So the tax credit scheme is a type of public-private partnership because we're asking private sector, bring your tax before it is due. Mm. Honorable Minister, you might forgive me because when you speak, I mean, uh, I haven't seen you work as Governor of Lagos and when PPP was mentioned, mm. uh, what immediately comes to mind is the Lekki Concession and Company yeah. and yeah. they have a toll. We saw how contentious that was. We've seen how contentious tolling has been uh, in Nigeria. We scrapped it one time, we reintroduced it. And then we now have you talking about PPPs and what people are looking to see is a reintroduction of polls. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm saying. That's uh, what tolls, I'm saying. Rather. That's what I'm yeah. saying that first of all we must understand these concepts when we use them so I was going into an explanation Indeed. so I'm telling you that PPPs don't necessarily mean only concessions mm -hmm. there's so many possibilities one of them is what you have seen what well, are you thinking concessioning so let me go there so there will be concessions so we have a policy called the highway development management initiative where we are planning to concession 12 roads, uh, aggregating to a little over 1,000 kilometers. We are anticipating that there will be investments 
in excess of a trillion if we succeed. So we're testing the market. So people have said, hand it to private sector, give it to them, they can do it. So we've created this policy packet to say, hello guys, let's do this business. So we're at the stage now, we've pre-qualified 18 companies uh, out of 75 who met the minimum threshold. So we're going to the stage called the request for proposals, whether we're submitting proposals to us about what. In order for them to do this, they needed to know what the tolling guidelines will be. And that's why I presented the uh, national tolling policy to FEC a few weeks back, and it was approved. So tolling will be part of it. Way bridges will be part of what we expect to see. Warehouses to offload excess cargo at way bridges will be part of it. Uh, towing vehicle service, ambulance services, uh, rest houses are all part of the package that we expect to see, including right of way management for advertising and so on and so forth. Honorable Minister, politics is in the air. Oftentimes when uh, the political season nears, people are always afraid that works, well, work either comes to a halt or very little is going on. How optimistic are you that as the political season uh, comes even closer, that you will be able to achieve all that you seek to achieve in your ministry uh, before we go full blown into politics? I am very, very optimistic and positive because the best politics really is service delivery. That for me is the politics that, uh, that explains the reason why I am even in government. How can you make it better? So um, our work is well planned. I, I, I thrive on planning. So I have a sense of where I will be and uh, whether we hit the plan 100% or 98% or 60%, clearly I see progress ahead. We are going into what I call a season of completion already. So you will see us handing over a couple of things as we go on. You will see that we've completed, uh, we've moved from housing, for example, much more houses have been completed now compared to last year. Uh, some road projects are also coming to completion. Some bridge projects are also coming to completion. I've gone to inspect a couple of them. Econ Bridge, the bridge to Cameroon, uh, Church and Gi Bridge, and so many others, uh, local Weto Bridge. So we're coming into that season, and our work is good. Clearly, we won't be able to finish everything. No government finishes everything. No matter how long you stay there, new things will come. But we will be leaving the place much, much better than, than we met it. I am confident of that. And that would have achieved our progressive purpose and our progressive ideal, which is to improve the human condition. That's what really this is all about. Well, I'm wondering uh, how you, because <laughs> talking about politics now, uh, the, the National Assembly has just passed the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, and they're hoping to uh, have transfer, transfer it to the president for assent. And one of the things that has now become quite contentious is this issue of direct or indirect primaries. How do you think it will affect the stability of your party as it goes into its own convention come December this year? It is my honest view that nobody can uh, preempt what is in a bill. Let Parliament do its work. I will discuss it when it becomes a law. They've done their work. Uh, they, it hasn't They've become done a their law. work. They passed it. I won't discuss a bill. I'm a lawyer, not a biller. <laughs> well, indeed. You're, so you're, we will you're, discuss it when it becomes law. Indeed. But, it, I mean, as it stands right now, if one were to look at it, some people might say that it's already 70% done. All that needs right now, all he needs right now is signage by the president. The only thing I will tell you, the only thing I will tell you yes. is that every law that is made by the National Assembly is made on the assumption that it will, um, it will conform with all the provisions of the Constitution. You don't think that it will have any implication for your party, whichever way it swings? 
Look, and you're, you're not worried about the implication it will have for your party, whatever way, whichever way it swings. Laws are meant to affect people's lives. Indeed. But it has not become a law. Do you fear, I mean, this is, we have the status quo right now. The status quo is that no, you can all have... all you are going to get from me is that <laughs> I won't express fear about a bill. <laughs> I will express concern about a law. Welcome back. You're watching Hard Copy coming to you from our studios in Abuja. It's the very final part of our interview with the Minister of Works and Housing, Mr. Babasine Fashola. And in this segment, my first poser to him is about the fate of his party, the APC, without President Buhari on the ballot. And if he fears his party could go asunder as a result of that. As I've said to you, I look for angels, not devils. So those who have those fears keep their fears to themselves. What angels do you see on the horizon? Well, you know, the president has to go. And uh, we, we will confront the reality of his absence. Uh, when we get there, we will have to um, first pick our national leaders in uh, an elective convention and move on. So for me, uh, those things are the responsibility, as I said, of a team of people. These are shared responsibilities. Mm. And national, so far, yeah. so far, let me say, so far, so good. It is also my responsibility and that of those of us in cabinet to also deliver on our own side to ensure that the people receive as much of what we promise to give them. And that is the handshake that takes us to confront our opponents. Are you interested in being president? Being president? President of where? <laughs> I don't know how many countries you, I don't know how many passports you carry, but I would assume They're that would be Nigeria. President of Chamber of Commerce, president of this, <laughs> president of that. The president of Nigeria, <laughs> more specifically. <laughs> It's a very, very tough responsibility, tough job. I don't envy those who have uh, held that office. And I don't envy those who aspire to take it as well. OK, that doesn't quite answer my question. And that's my own answer. OK, um, I'd like to know, for those who are already throwing your hats into the rings, and I'm sure you've heard quite a few of them, mm. uh, have you first? No, I don't have a hat to <laughs> throw in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> but are you watching those? Are they, are they, is there anyone whom you support? As far as I'm aware, nobody has said, I want to be Nigeria's president. There are people speaking for people. Nobody has come out. We are not at that stage. Is there stage. anyone who We're you speak for? We're not at that for? stage yet. I can't, again, I can't venture out and say, I will speak for X or Y. Let the person come out and say, I want to serve Nigeria. I have looked after myself. You know, I, I, I think it, it, it pains me sometimes when we see that very, very important uh, job and responsibility re reduced to, uh, my people said. I think the whole sense of it should be I am able, I have looked after myself, give me your problems. That's in essence what I think the governor, the local government chairman or a president is saying. Give me your problems, you go to sleep. But in the event that people eventually step out, and I, I believe that very soon we will see people step out, um, is there anyone that you think, let me be more specific. Now there are talks that the national leader of the APC would want to run for president. Will you support him? National leader of APC? Yes. Talks by who? That Ashiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu would like to run for office. <sighs> you, you know, again, this is what we said. I saw him last week. He didn't tell me he's running for office. And to the best of my Did knowledge, you ask him? to the best of my knowledge, to the best of my knowledge, the last statement he made about it is that people will know in January. Okay. But did you ask him? No, I didn't ask him. I just went to see and see how well he was doing. 
So you didn't put the question to him? Come on. This is despite the billboards. I mean, the, the whole the, their somebody, entire billboards how coming you up. see somebody who has been convalescing mm -hmm. and all of that? And the next thing you're asking him, and he has issued a statement mm -hmm. that I will speak in January. So let's wait for his speech now. Mm, okay. But I mean, people wouldn't know whether, you know, <laughs> there, there are people, you, you are amongst people or, you know, people who are putting up billboards right here in the federal capital me territory. putting up billboards. We, we, cannot, we cannot pretend that we do not. No, no, no. Are you accusing me of putting up billboards? Is it a crime to put no, up billboards? No, no. Are you accusing me of doing I such didn't, a thing? Is it, I didn't say it was an allegation. That's what I'm asking. Oh, I'm, is it, I'm, is I'm, it a I'm, crime? I'm, no, 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 no. If I mean, you did put me. up one, will it no, be no, a no, crime? No, 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 no. I mean, look, listen. My, my views are very clear about this thing. As I've said, this responsibility uh, is a tough one. I've seen... I've seen some of the men who take this job uh, suffer at close quarters and uh, it's not something that should then be the subject of somebody just have one hair brisk and we'll put up billboard mark for president. That's not how it works. And we must take our country much more seriously than those kind of things and wait for people who really want to do the job to say, I want to do this job. And then we can begin to have a conversation around them. But based on how your party has performed so far, the jury's still out. What do you think about the chances of your party will be come 2023? It's been a difficult eight years, so to we, speak. We've done, we've done and responded to some of uh, Nigeria's most enduring challenges. Some of the things that people thought would never happen have happened. We, of course, we have faced newer challenges. And I must be honest, there are some things we could have done a lot better. And uh, those are matters of self-examination. But I remain very, very optimistic against the opposition or lack of it that I see. Um, we will meet them when the time comes. And uh, we, we will best them as we have done on the last two occasions. But on the, on the whole, in general, in terms of the security of the country, which continues to, you know, continue to be a source of concern to many, and even issues of separatism arising from the southwest and even the southeast, you know, what exactly do you see are the chances for Nigeria? Because, I mean, look at Anambra. Anambra was a very big... Um, when I say surprise for a number of people that elections could even hold there, but the fact that the, f the fact that we question whether or not elections would hold in a place that had been otherwise peaceful, owing to separatist agitations, and that we got to that you know extent, there are questions as to what will happen, what will be the fate of the larger Nigeria in terms of taking all of this, uh, you know, contending issues on board. Okay, my sense is that. Look, we, we have our challenges, and I refuse to be defined by those challenges. I see opportunities in them. I see a better Nigeria tomorrow. I see it every day. You see opportunities in separatism? I see opportunities in the challenges that we have as a country. There are always opportunities. Every time that there is a problem, and that's why people tell you don't waste a crisis. There is one thing to have a crisis. The worst thing is to waste one. And the opportunities in every problem that we face. And I am always positive in my outlook. How do I, how do I get better from this? And a life without problems is not a life lived at all. The life lived is a life that confronts problems, solves them, learns from them, and ensures that they don't recur. What opportunities do you see in the separatist agitations that have arisen? I did not speak specifically to opportunities in separatism. I spoke to challenges. And since you now drill down to separatism, there are opportunities there for a conversation around why those, those uh, uh, voices are now louder than perhaps they were 20, 30 years ago. And those agitations that we want to leave, for example, the they're not unique to Nigeria. The Scottish want a referendum and they want to leave if the opportunity provides it. So it's not unique to us. These are human issues. And how we engage with one another 
and to then ask the genuine questions. I will, and I think that we will always be better off together and to find out how to make that union much truer, much better, and more fulfilling for everybody. That's an opportunity, it's a conversation I like to have. That's our program tonight. But as always, do feel free to share your thoughts with us using the handles on your screen. If you missed the first part of the interview, do watch again on channelstv.com forward slash programs forward slash hard copy. Thank you for watching tonight. I'm Maupa Ogun Yusuf. Good night. <laughs>